Joseph Biden wants to immediately reverse much of what President Trump has done over the last four years, but that is often easier said than done, and he has begrudgingly applauded some of President Trump's legacy. Several of President Trump's policies, achievements, and personnel decisions are likely to stand because politics, logistics, or finances make it too painful for Biden to change course. Or because he agrees with the policy. Here are some of those policies demanding bigger NATO payments from allies. Even critics of President Trump's foreign policy endeavors admit his public haranguing helped force NATO member countries to increase their defense spending to hit 2024 target amounts. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg told President Trump at a joint press conference in December 2019 Your leadership on defense spending is having a real impact. This is unprecedented. This is making NATO stronger. And it shows that this alliance is adapting, responding when the world is changing. In 2014, NATO member countries said they would aim to boost their national defense spending to at least 2% of GDP by 2024 in light of Russia's incursions into Crimea. Mr. Stoltenberg said that since 2016, Canada and European allies have added $130 billion more to their defense budgets. A figure that is expected to increase to $400 billion by 2024. President Trump publicly urged countries to step up their spending, a goal Biden won't rush to roll back. Mr. Blinken said Tuesday that it's certainly a good thing that NATO allies are investing more. Jim Townsend, a Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for European and NATO policy during the Obama administration, said. For Biden coming in, It's like okay, number one, to NATO and to the Allies. Burden sharing is as important to us, either me as the leader or the Democrats, it's just as important to us as it is to the Republicans and to Trump. Mr. Townsend also said, he used a hammer that has never been used. It was a medicine that was very dangerous in the sense that that medicine harmed the patient. Banning bump stocks. President Trump, Who has been staunchly pro gun since taking office, vexed gun rights advocates in 2018 when he announced he was directing then Attorney General Jeff Sessions to find a way to ban bump stocks, which attach to semi automatic rifles to produce a rate of fire similar to machine guns. The new regulation further riled gun advocates because the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives previously concluded that it lacked authority to ban bump stocks, concluding that they weren't technically firearms. Still, the ban took effect in March 2019 despite legal challenges from pro gun groups. Congressional Democrats praised the move but said Congress needed to back it up with legislation. Senator Chris Murphy, Connecticut Democrat, said after the Trump administration formally announced the ban. If Republicans actually cared about banning bump stocks, they would pass legislation making it crystal clear that the government has the authority to ban these devices. Biden also is weighing how much of his agenda he can pursue via executive action instead of wrestling legislation through Congress. It's difficult to see Joe Biden, who campaigned for stricter gun controls, acting administratively to loosen firearms related restrictions unless Congress were prepared to immediately step in and replace the rule with a legislative ban. Eric Pratt, senior vice president of the group Gun Owners of America, said, We do not foresee that a Biden administration would roll back the bump stock ban, so we will continue to challenge this ban in the courts. Rewrite of North American Free Trade Agreement. Biden said he won't immediately roll back some of President Trump's initiatives on trade. He even acknowledged that the president's rewrite of the North American Free Trade Agreement is an improvement on the original version, which Joe Biden supported as a senator. During the campaign, Biden begrudgingly conceded that the new US Mexico Canada agreement is a better deal than North American Free Trade Agreement. Biden sent a strong signal on how he wants to approach the USMCA with his announcement of Catherine Tai, a congressional trade lawyer, as his choice to be United States Trade Representative. Ms. Tai helped the Democrat led House secure additional protections for labor in the revised deal as it made its way through Congress. Richard Trumka, President of the AFL CIO Labor Federation, hailed Ms. Tai's appointment and said Biden is thus far living up to his word on moving ahead, in line with President Trump's new approach on trade. Mr. Trumka said, 
For decades, administrations of both political parties have enacted harmful trade policies that held down wages and didn't provide for better working conditions by creating incentives to ship good paying jobs overseas. With Thai as the United States trade representative, we will be strongly positioned to advance a fair trade agenda that makes the world safer and workers stronger. Moving United States Embassy in Israel to Jerusalem. President Trump enthralled pro Israel advocates around the world when he followed through on his pledge to move the United States Embassy in Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Mr. President formally recognized Jerusalem as the country's capital in December 2017 and the United States Embassy moved in May 2018. Mr. Trump said in December 2017. While previous presidents have made this a major campaign promise, they failed to deliver. Today, I am delivering. Even as Joe Biden criticized President Trump's policies in the Middle East, he indicated last year that he would not seek to reverse course. Biden said at a fundraiser in April, Now that it's done, I would not move the embassy back to Tel Aviv. Biden also held out hope for engagement with the Palestinians and the prospect of an eventual two state solution. Arab leaders strongly condemned President Trump's move. Jewish people long considered Jerusalem to be their true capital city. But Palestinians want East Jerusalem to be their capital as part of a two state solution. Joe Biden said he would reopen a United States consulate in East Jerusalem to engage the Palestinians. Reaching historic Abraham Accords. President Trump helped broker peace deals that resulted in the historic normalization of relations between Israel and a growing number of Middle Eastern countries, including the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain. The Abraham Accords, announced in September, Marked the first time an Arab country announced normalized relations with Israel since 1994. The initial agreement included the UAE and Bahrain. Other countries such as Sudan and Morocco have since signed normalization agreements with Israel. President Trump received multiple nominations for the Nobel Peace Prize for helping broker the deals. Joe Biden sent out a terse statement welcoming the initial announcements from the UAE and Bahrain. He said, A Biden Harris administration will build on these steps, challenge other nations to keep pace, and work to leverage these growing ties into progress toward a two state solution and a more stable, peaceful region. Antony Blinken, Biden's pick for Secretary of State, said Tuesday that the incoming administration wants to take a look at some of the commitments that might have been made in the context of the agreements. Mr. Blinken told members of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee at his confirmation hearing. But the work that was done to push forward on the normalization with Israel, I applaud. It makes Israel safer. It makes the region safer.